Hi, in this particular video, we will talk about the very new feature introduced in Splunk 8.2 called uh, Splunk Federated Search. Now, it's, it's a very interesting feature and in this particular video, we will first try to get an overview of the overall architecture of the Splunk Federated Search. Probably in next few videos, we'll talk more about uh, how to implement Federated Search in Splunk. So, so what is Splunk Federated Search? So before we, uh, before we answer this particular question, let us try to take a couple of scenarios where we are going to use Federated Search, then probably it will be easier to understand there. So let's say, let's say we, we have an organization, okay? Now that organization may have separate entities based on continents. Let's say for Americas, it has separate entity for Asia, it has separate entity and for EU, it has separate entities as well. Now, this is required probably because of the local laws or or setting organizational boundaries or probably data securities. There could be various reason uh, why a particular organization have separate separate entities based on separate separate continents, right? But they all move to basically hierarchy back to the, the same organization over there, right? Something like let's say YouTube India or YouTube Japan, something like this one, right? But, but at the end of the day, they all hierarchy wise, they all move back to that YouTube US over there, right? So similar kind of concepts over there. Now think about an organization which uses Splunk for their separate separate entities based on separate separate continents, right? So each and every continent will basically act as a independent entity over there, right? So they may have their own Splunk setup. Like for Americas, let's say they have their own Splunk cluster setup, right? For Asia also same, for EU also same. And these environments are completely, dip, basically independent of each other over there, right? There is no connectivity between them. Now, it may happen that you want to generate some report at the organization level right or let's say you want to run some schedule searches which requires data from all of these entities over here so let's say we set up a splunk instance somewhere over here which requires to have data to access data from all these separate separate splunk instances which are basically totally independent of each other over here right so in this type of scenario we required a federated search to achieve that one okay so this could be one one scenario where we are going to use a federated search environment basically a federated search to access data from different independent splunk environments over there this could be another this could be one scenario there could be another scenario over here let's say for a particular organization uh, some of its data probably like less critical or less sensitive data they are storing in cloud okay and more sensitive data they are storing in on-premise instances now there could be requirement that we uh, and for cloud they have separate splunk deployment for on-premise also they have separate splunk deployment here okay now there could be requirement that we want to generate report or something based which requires the data from both of these instances over here right so in those cases also I will be using the federated search over here. Okay, so federated search is basically as the name suggests, as the as the word federated has that particular meaning itself, right? So we are going to basically aggregate data from different sources which are independent of each other here. Okay, now there are certain terminologies which we need to know when we talk about federated search. So let us talk about them. So so what what we do when we basically uh, talk about a federated search is we set up a splunk instance now when we talk about splunk instance in scenario one as well as scenario two this could be a single instance as well as cluster okay so previously splunk has a concept called hybrid search where basically it was cloud to cloud like from cloud deployment you can access the data from different other cloud deployments only but from in the federated search they basically broaden that that particular functionality so where now you can basically access data from 
cloud as well as on premise from on premise to another on premise from on premise to cloud as well see all the possible combinations are available now so when you talk about federated search so we basically set up an environment over here right so it says it's a splunk deployment it could be a cluster as well now from here so this this environment basically we are, we run a search this is called the federated search right now why it is called federated search probably there is a syntax over here which basically distinguished it from the other searches which we'll talk about very soon but this this instance from where we are running the federated search is called the local deployment okay and the instances where basically fetching the federated search data is called the federated provider okay so so basically this instance gather data from all the federated providers aggregate it and then send the result back to user because it's a, it's a search head right from where we are running the search we'll talk about the technical implementations very soon so now how these two instances talk to each other so basically they talk which using a service account like you need to create a service account in your federated provider and using that service account you will be basically running that search and as we will be creating a service account so all the security related stuff like which indexes it will be having access uh, that that federated search will be having access so you can control that using the service account as well even you can create user level access over here as well like which indexes user can have access as well over here so in this instance as well over here okay so so this is the overall use cases we can think of like where federated search would be very much useful over there right so now let's talk about the technical details like how we can implement a federated search like the architecture technical architecture of the federated search so so for that what i did is basically if I, if i just take a single federated provider and single local deployment so let's talk about how it will look like so let's say i have this federated provider in deployment over here right it could be a single deployment in single search it with indexers or it could be a search it cluster as well same for our local as well right so the search heads available over here is called the remote search head and the search head available over here in our local deployment is called the federated search head okay so and both of this search head have their corresponding indexers over here right for from which it basically fetches the data like all our indexes will be available over here right as the at the indexer layer over here or the search peers over here so the indexers available in our federated providers are called the remote indexer and the same is in our local deployment is called the local indexer over here it's very simple terms over here now the main stuff about how you will make sure it's a federated search so for that you need to define a federated index in your search head okay and there will be a corresponding remote data set now when we talk about remote data set it's a fancy name it just points out a particular index over here in our federated provider over here currently i think it's only it supports the index over here accessing the index now there will be a one to one mapping of like the federated index defined in our local search head to the remote data set over here so you can define more than one federated index and that will have a corresponding remote data set in our federated provider as well over here okay so what will happen like let now let's talk about a search federated search over here it it will look something like this one over here okay where if you see it we have a two separate sub searches over here first sub search is basically accessing a index here so basically when you will be running a federated search you will be running the search against the federated index defined in your search head okay so and how it will be accessing it so there is a federated keyword over here if you see it federated colon the federated index name over here so when splunk will see this kind of searches so it knows like 
there is a federated provider set up already in our in our local that settings when we will be demoing it we will see that one there we need to set it up this provider in our local over there so splunk knows like there should be a provider federated provider set up in our local environment and this particular index will have a corresponding remote data set available as well so what will happen is this particular search portion where we have this federated keyword will be passed over to this federated provider for running and this guy what it will do is basically it will run this search give the result back to our local then the local what it will do is basically this this is the local index right which is defined over here as well in in our local server right in our local indexer over here so now this guy it will basically get the details from this federated provider it will also run this particular local search aggregate it take the stats and then give the result back to our user over here so this is how the whole process will work over here okay and while doing that all the connectivities will be maintained by a service account you will be defining in your federated federated provider over here and this will also make sure like you need to you can basically define the security level access level details as well over here for the service account so that it will have only access to those remote data set which you have defined it over there okay so this is the overall use case as well as the technical architecture of the splunk federated search in the next video we will try to see a demo of that one okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video